Hey guys, Gregor Wilkie here, your neighborhood ninja, and I'm here in a video blog to tell you about a little shady place I like to call Vector Marketing. So if you ever, ever get a letter in the mail from Vector Marketing Corporation that looks like this, has your name on it, is addressed to you, and talking about summer work opportunities, this high pay, don't work there. What really peeves me is that I got this letter and I've already been hired there for two weeks. Yeah, that's right, two weeks. That's how well they keep track of their employees. So let me tell you about the job a little bit. I got recommended this place called Vector Marketing and I was told I was going to be a salesman. And okay, you know, being a salesman sounds cool. I was making, they told me I'd make $15 an hour doing this job. I got interviewed right away with a bunch of four other people. Next, I was hired without any experience. I mean, I didn't even bring a resume or anything. I just was hired. He made me feel really good that I was hired. He was talking about how highly selective they were and that they only hired 20% of the people that walked through their door. And you find out that that's all baloney. They hired just about any random jackass that walks through the door. And so they butter you up, and they make you think you're getting this great job, but I found out the hard way that it sucks. My first thing I had to do was three days of training, salesman training. They make you sit through, get this, 18 hours of unpaid training. So you sit there, you listen to knife training, you do some role playing, and they, they teach you this 45 minute long demo on how you're supposed to present the knives, and you're just supposed to follow this booklet. These knives, they're just ridiculously expensive. I mean, a homemaker set plus, homemaker set plus eight costs about $1,000. And they go and tell you that everybody's able to afford these because we have payments and they'll last forever, so they're actually the cheapest knives. And I mean, unless somebody doesn't have their priorities in check, they're not going to need these knives. I mean, sure, I'd like a Ferrari, but uh, I don't have that kind of money. I never will have that kind of money. I already have a car, so I don't need one. You could come in here and have the best Ferrari salesman sit down with me and he'd give me a good show and make me want to buy it, but in reality, I just can't. And that's the same with Cutco. They make you sound like anybody's going to have a sale nine times out of ten people will buy anyways, and that's not true. That's just something they butter you up with. And then they, they complain to you, telling you that you're not a good salesman when you can't sell the stuff, and it's just, it's just baloney. So after three days of unpaid training, um, the question finally, it was real weird because I sat through 18 hours of this training and I didn't even know how the job worked. So finally I raised my hand and I asked my manager and I'm like, so how do we sell this stuff? They build up this image in your mind that you're going to be sitting in their office, in their cubicle, giving demos as they bring people in for you and you, while you may sit back and make $15 an hour. That is not the job they're giving you. That's what it seems like, but it's not. This is a door-to-door basically knife salesman job, phone, whatever. You basically go through your phone contact list. You're supposed to come in on day two with 20 people you know that you could sell to and come in the next day with those people. So they expect you to call everybody you know, all your relatives, your friends, parents, whatever, and sell a bunch of knives to them or bother them to at least sit through the demo because you get paid even if you don't show it. Or even if you don't sell it, just to show it you get paid, which is true but also crap because almost no one wants you to sit in their house for 45 minutes until you put on a knife show for them. They're only doing it out of pity. So you're supposed to come in and do that and uh, then from there they're supposed to recommend people and all this sort of crap that never happens and you're just supposed to build your own knife empire from there and you'll be making a thousand dollars a week they tell you selling knives and I'll tell you I didn't make a single sale. I had my relatives do about five demos with me and nothing. And they said they didn't want anything and they didn't want anything. And that's the way it goes. I mean, I guess there are people who are successful at this job and those are the people with no shame. I mean, I guess if you have no shame, you can knock on any house and uh, sit there and get somebody to do a demo with you for 45 minutes and you can guilt trip them into buying knives they don't really need. Well, good for you. Then you sold some Cutco um, and you're a successful salesman. Oh, congratulations. But for the rest of the world, unless you have no shame, this is not the job for you. The one thing that I hated most is that they bragged out that they had this flexible schedule. I'm like, okay, I can make $15 an hour on this flexible schedule. This, they want you in the office like every other day for a team meeting, a phone jam where 
all your friends come in and you all call people that you would give demos to on your cell phones. That's the other thing. They don't even let you use an office phone. They don't even have office phones for you to use. You're supposed to have a party with your cell phones and your friends and call people and it's a bunch of baloney. And they want you in there once a week for a team meeting, another night for an order turn in, another week for advanced training, and you're literally there. I mean, I didn't go to any of it, and it's all unpaid, but they're, you're literally there like four out of the seven days a week at least. So it doesn't work around another job because if you miss all that, it freaking leave voicemails on your phone nonstop. I had a track phone where literally every morning I'd wake up and have a new voicemail because I didn't call in that morning because they want to know exactly what you're doing and if you don't give them your full life for that day in a nutshell, they're going to be pissed at you. Like the first night when I came out of training, me and my friend, came out of training, right? Three o'clock left, we got called by our managers at five o'clock. Oh, how are your demos going and blah, blah, blah. It's just like, leave me alone. Uh, I can work independently. And, and as soon as I got called and it, it was over with, literally my friend sitting right next to me, like clockwork, would get the same phone call from my same manager sitting right next to me and he'd call my friend and talk about the same exact stuff. We thought that was bad. Two hours later, we're getting called again. Oh, I just learned if you got more demos in and blah, blah, blah. These, people, these managers literally have no lives. I literally turned my phone off for three days and I had six new voicemails on there because they were so worried about their demo, precious $139 demo kit I was leasing and uh, whether or not I was doing demos or not. And we haven't heard from you in 24 hours and they start freaking out like you're somebody that, some mom just lost their kid at the mall. It's, it's bogus. The pay is bogus. The job is bogus. Even if you say, even if you do make a sale, oh, I get fifteen dollars to drive to somebody's house, pay my own gas, I sit there for an hour, fill out a form, and then you're supposed to do a follow up on them and make sure they like their stuff once they bought it. Is that worth even fifteen dollars? No. I mean, I'm wasting half of that just driving gas. I live in a small town. I don't have that many connections. I mean, I guess if I was selling this stuff in Beverly Hills, California, where everybody's got a million dollars, sure they can maybe afford to buy a thousand dollars a night for me. But the reality is, most people aren't. And the other thing that pays me is that these knives, oh, they cost twice as much in stores and blah, blah, blah. They already cost $1,000 for a set. But they get away with giving their best managers, their best sales representatives who have sold 30000 or more, 50% commission. If they can afford to give the sales reps 50% commission, Theoretically, they can cut their knife prices in half and still make a profit, a profit, obviously. And the other thing is, they, they don't even value you as an employee. They just want to take over the world, basically. They want to be in contact with every, you, all your friends. They literally went to our high school guidance office, got all the addresses from our high school graduates, and mailed a letter out to everybody trying to scam them in to the job. And then the people that do get hired there, they sit there and they have you write down recommendations of people who you'd like to work there. So you you know you think, oh, well, maybe you write down two people, but that's not good enough for them. So they start bribing you by giving away a free cut go. Like, I was given the opportunity to get a free peeler if I could uh, give my manager 40 phone numbers of people that would work there. And they have you go through your phone contact list, write down all the numbers on a piece of notebook paper, and then hand it in to them. And even that's not good enough. And then load up, they want you to load up your Facebook profile just so you can give them all their phone numbers so they can hire more employees and basically take over the world and scam more people. It's just unjust. And like, they literally, I mean, they don't just take your phone numbers. They have the receptionist there call every one of these people. I mean, it's literally, if you write them down, trust me, they're getting a call. Vector marketing. I'm glad to say that I'm quitting today, turning in my stuff, and goodbye. I'm done with this shady business, and I hope this video has warned you, convinced you not, I repeat not, to work at Vector Marketing for these reasons. This has been Gregor Wilkie. I've had a lot of, a lot of fun giving this uh, my first video vlog. Stay tuned for more, and I hope you don't work at Vector.